Hello, I'm Eric, and welcome to my madness. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Galactic Empire's collectible card game. This is probably the third collectible card game that came out, maybe the fourth. It came out just after Magic the Gathering and Spellfire. It's definitely the first science fiction collectible card game that was ever released. It, its initial release was in uh, early 1990, well, mid-1994, August was when the first Alpha set came out. The end of 1994 was Primary Edition. That was the first real release of the game. That one came out just in time for Christmas. There was a German Gold Border that came out sometime after that. It was a German translation that contained mostly cards from the Primary Edition. Uh, it actually removed some cards from that edition. And then quickly through 1995 and 1996, there were a lot of releases. They, they did New Empires, Powers of the Mind, and Time Gates fairly quickly through 1995. And then by the end of 1995, the Universe Edition. So I have some decks here from mostly those sets. Right here, I have what I believe is a beta release starter. Now, one of the reasons why I say I believe it's a starter is because at the top of the box here, it actually lists expansion packs and starter decks, basic decks. I'm pretty sure it contains basic decks only. We'll find out in a few minutes when I crack it open. I then have a booster box of the primary edition as well as starter decks A and B from primary edition. So these two decks were the starter decks that you would get with the game for the game. They weren't really made to be playable decks, and they were mostly fixed decks, meaning that they contained all the same cards. Every basic deck A is almost exactly identical. Every basic deck B is almost identical. Basic deck A contained cards for the Argonian Empire and Krebis Capitalist Alliance which normally you would not be able to mix empires it well be able to mix the primary empires in a uh a play deck and then the basic deck B had the corporate uh let's see corporate capitalist alliance I think it is and the mech at hold fest and again normally you couldn't mix the primary empires in a deck. Now, after the primary edition came out, they released new empires. I don't have any new empires packs today, but I do have a new empire starter to open. And this one contains Scorpid and POT, Plasma Occupied Territory cards. And just like basic deck A and B, it was a fixed deck. Uh, it wasn't really made to be uh, a play deck to the rule standards it was just a uh a, a deck to, that you could get to demo and get a few cards to be able to play a little bit now the next expansions that came out i have a couple packs of powers of the mind a couple of loose packs of time gates plus a time gates booster box i have six boosters for the universe edition Universe Edition was the first big revision of the game that they did after the Primary Edition came out. And it basically combined Primary Edition, New Empires, and threw in a splashing of cards from uh, Powers of the Mind, Time Gates, even some cards I think that were in Advanced Technologies got included in the Universe Edition as well. Now, in addition to the booster box for Universe Edition, I have two starters for universe edition and two from a later set you'll note that they all say universe edition on them so how do you tell which set of the starter deck came from from the universe edition well the flip side every deck has a window in it that shows you one card and every card that it showed would be an empire specific card just looking at these cards i can tell that this is a corporate deck and this is a krebis deck 
Corporate and Krebs were two of the empires that were released as the Universe Edition. The next set that contained any starter decks was Comedy Club on the Far Side of the Galaxy. That one, there were four versions of the play deck, although they were mostly identical. And it had uh, the signpost card was, I think, always the card that showed through on the end. The signpost looked literally like a roadside signpost, the type that would mark the name of the road. So the next set that came out with starter decks after that is Galactic Invaders. And here I have a, a Quarren deck from the Galactic Invaders and a, a, a Gecko deck, or Gecko deck from Galactic Invaders. So th there were, I think, five Empires released for Galactic Invaders. And then the next set that had starter decks was Allied Forces, and I believe there were 10 Empires released in that set. And there were 10 from the original universe. So you basically had to look at the win windows to see what Empires you'd be getting. And then I, you see here I have a Piracy and a Persona booster pack as well. So we'll go through all of these. I'm going to open up... All of these, I'm going to save the booster boxes for last, although I'm going to steal a starter deck or two out of here and a couple of booster packs out of this one. Since I have a couple of loose boosters, I'll save time gates for later. I'm going to start out by opening this up, since this is the alpha edition, or uh, beta edition, I do believe. Now, alpha and beta edition were generally pretty similar. They added a few cards to beta. Did a few changes. But it wasn't vastly different. There are a handful of cards that did not exist. And, uh... Let's see... There we go. That did not want to come out. So yeah, this is all starters, which is what I expected. And I'll set the rest of that aside. I want to open two of them because I'm reasonably sure that the uh, starter decks for beta were fixed, just like the basic decks A, B, and C from Primary New Empires. But I've never opened one, so I'm just going to check it out. This primary edition box came sealed improperly from the factory. It's been sitting like that for God knows how long. So here we are. I'm going to take half of these out of here for now. I'm only going to open, I think, three right now. I'll explain why I'm taking half out in a little bit. So, we'll set some stuff aside. Commence the pack openings. Let me change the camera here. So this does not surprise me as far as this goes. These are not sealed at all. So it comes with a rule book. Not sure if you'll be able to see the surface on my camera. We'll take a look and see though. There are a few major differences between the uh, primary edition and later editions. And, oh, there you can kind of see the dimpled surface in the reflective lighting on the text field there. These have, like, a slightly dimpled surface, whereas the later edition cards are completely smooth. Now, another one of the changes they did in later editions, much to the detriment of the game, really, is every card has a text box on it. In the later editions, instead of having this be, like, a drop text... You can kind of see down here 
when I get on this, these are taped down, so I'm not going to pull them up. But when I open up a pack from later set, you can see how this is printed right onto the background. And on some of the backgrounds, it makes it very difficult to read the text. So, I want to see is how fixed these are. And looks like they're going to be very completely fixed, just like the alpha and beta or the uh, A and B decks here. We have a small phaser eel. Now here's one. They change the background of, of the hazards very much in the next printing, so that this text is easier to read. But then they messed up that text. This is an ion storm. Plasma field, point symbol. These are rules cards, basically that just tell you a, some information about how the game go is played, and all the types of points that are used in it. This game is very intensive on point symbols on the cards. For instance, here's space dragons, and they have damage symbols in the corners. Argonian destroyer. These ones, there's S4, so this ship is a strength 4. It has a supply and an energy point in the upper left hand corner. That's how much you would have to pay to be able to use that ship, basically to engage the ship for a turn. It has two shield points, three phasers, and two energy fluxes, which are heavy weapons. So a total of five weapons, two of which the energy flux is heavy weapons you had to pay for. Phasers you got anytime you engage the ship. So this could do up to seven damage in a turn. Fleet Tug, Argonian Frigate. Now the artwork on these I always loved. This this is like classic 40s, 50s, 70s sci-fi style. And I have a phaser eel with some big printing error on it. Here's our first difference in the deck. I have a light cruiser and a uh, Krabba's Clipper Frigate. Got Vectria Prime, Asteroid Belt. Krabba's Medium Capsule and a Pincher. Polar 4 and a Small Moon. We have another Clipper Frigate. Now one of the things they did do, which some people didn't like, I kind of like the fact they would reflect the artwork on some cards. This allowed them to have basically super common cards because if you have two common cards with the same artwork but flipped, effectively you have two of them. Time Warp, which even here is a useful card, although you can see it's very badly miscut, completely off center. Bureau X Comet. Engineer and Transporter. Breakdown and Probe. Probe, you can see, is slightly miscut. It's cut to the left a little bit. Although the back doesn't look too bad, just the front. This breakdown, again, is cut very badly. And this is one of the problems that chased this game all the way to the end, even the last print run. They always had miscut cards, and one of the disappointments of this game is how many miscut cards they had. Even the, uh, you would think that they would pay particular attention to the rare cards, even those you would get miscut. Even the ultra rares, the uh, uh, entity cards are, are one per box, and you'd get those miscut. Science Officer and Planetary Shield there. Kreb is Light Capsule and a Transporter. Heavy Capsule and a Black Hole. Small Nebula and an Argonian Heavy Cruiser. So I'm not sure how much... It looks like most of this deck is not fixed at all, which surprises me because the L A, B, and C decks are uh, 
all exactly identical. I opened up a box of each of those back in the day, and they were all exactly the same all the way down. I think there's like five cards in the back of each of those, of the A and B decks that were different. So they show off the same uh, ships, or the same artist for the ships. Sometimes, though, it looked very much like they reused the artwork in different ways. For instance, these two ships look almost exactly identical, except they added some phaser blast and burn marks to this one and changed the... Uh, it looks like they changed the sizing a little bit, the framing... The background image has actually changed a little bit. They, it looks like it's identical on the top, and then they changed a little on the bottom, so there's like this extra smoke cloud or something. Maybe a few of the stars are different, but otherwise the images are the same. And that was just a way for them to cut back on costs, because it cost them less to reuse the same image, I'm sure. So this game also had... a uh, some very specific card types. The ships are designated with an S. Equipment cards are designated with an E. Train cards are designated with a T in the upper left-hand corner. Train cards would produce resources that you could use to power the ships. You Once you got a ship into play, you could play a equipment card to it to be able to use it and there were crew cards which you could also play to the ships this particular crew is a boarding crew so if you had a ship in play with a shuttlecraft you could use the shuttlecraft to take the boarding party on a boarding mission to an opponent ship so there were different card combos you could use to uh get different effects done. And that's one of the basics one set up early in the game was the, the crew attacks. So. This one here is a hazard. I showed this earlier. This is designated with an H in the upper left hand corner. A hazard card is generally just played to the table, had its effect, and that was the end of it. Uh, some of them would last a number of turns. Some of them would be discarded after its initial use. So this one says a pulsar causes a number of points of damage each turn as indicated above. So in the upper left-hand corner, it has one damage listed. And then a pulsar lasts a number of turns equal to its strength. And then it specifies pulsars may be played against a terrain, base, or ship. So you could play this to a terrain. It would, it would do one damage each turn for three turns to that terrain. And unless the opponent could find a way to stop it from doing that damage, it, it would do all three damage eventually. If you play it on a strength three or less terrain, it would obviously destroy the terrain by the time its effects wore off. If you played on a larger terrain, you either would have to finish it off or find some other way to damage it before the effect wore off so that it would die. Now here we have Bolar system. This one has economy, supply, and energy. Economy points, which are those white symbols, are very useful in this game because you can use them to... Uh, uh, produce any other kind of point. So you could use this for three supply or three energy, two supply and two energy total, or you could use it to produce some of the other kinds of points that the game needed. For instance, the, uh, the heavy weapon points that you need to provide for a ship, so you can use the heavy weapons. Now, the two types of weapons, phasers and heavy weapons with the square, 
could damage different targets. Phasers could damage ships and bases, which I haven't seen any bases. I don't think there were any in the initial set here. But, uh, phasers could only damage ships or bases or dragon cards, which were added later. Dragons were considered identical to ships. The heavy weapons could be used to damage terrain. Or some, there were a few cards, I think, that could only be damaged by heavy weapons. So, if you wanted to f finish off a uh, terrain which you damaged with your pulsar, you would need to power up the heavy weapons and use them. But heavy weapons could also be used on ships and bases and other standard targets. Here's an occurrence card. I, this one came up before. This is a breakdown. An occurrence card. This one says it would be played to a base or ship of any strength, and the base or ship may not fire its weapons or use equipment cards until the turn after the breakdown has been repaired. So you would need to spend a repair point to fix this breakdown, which means that at a very minimum, your unless you can come up with a way to generate repair points during your turn, this would be out of your your ship would be knocked out until at least the beginning of your next turn when you could allocate repair points. If you didn't have any way to allocate repair points at the beginning of your turn, it might be another turn before you could uh, repair the breakdown. So even a simple card like this, the breakdown only required one repair point to repair it. Played at the right time, you might be able to knock a ship out for two or three turns. So there's there was a lot of interesting gameplay and subtlety. <clears throat> okay, here we have a science officer. This one says R slash C1. The R stands for reaction. Now, one of the unique things about Galactic Empires over some of the other card games at the time is that you could play cards in reaction on your opponent's turn as a free play. You just had to be able to use one of the functions on the card. For instance, Science Officer, gen officer generates one research point per turn and indefinitely suspends the effects of hostile monster cards at his location. So if an opponent played a monster card on your ship, you could play a Science Officer in reaction to prevent the monster card from having its full effect. Or if he played a card to your ship that required a research point to negate, you could instantly play the science officer in reaction to produce that research point and eliminate it immediately. So during your turn, you were only allowed to play three cards, but if you lined up your reaction cards right, you could use them for different effects. Transporter can be used to transport a person from a uh, location of the transporter where it's played to another location or from another location to the transporter. So if you have a ship that's about to be destroyed, you could play a transporter to take a crew from that ship and move it to the transporter in reaction. Then on your next turn, you could move that crew to another location if you wanted as a function, standard function of the transporter. So I got Small Moon, Bureau X Comet, Crevice Clipper Frigate, their engineer, Reaction Doctor, and, oh, there is a base here. Although this is one of the low-level bases. It's a planetary shield. It's got three shield points, and the shields would protect a terrain on which the planetary shield was played. So I was expecting that to uh, contain a lot more of the same cards than it wound up doing. And actually, I know for a fact the Time Warp is a rare card in the later sets. I don't remember what the rarity is in this set. So now I have Series 2, Primary Edition. The initial release of the game had about 100 cards, I think it was. 
primary edition had 400 cards, I believe it was. And then New Empires added 200 more, give or take. So with primary edition and New Empires, the game was up to about 600, 650 cards. And then eventually when Universe released, I think Universe was in the neighborhood of 650 cards on its own. Most of which had been taken from these earlier sets. So... So I'm going to pull up cards here. Hopefully, get to see. Yes, it's in there. Standard things included in every deck A and B. This, now, this is a thin piece of paper. Very pretty. Edward Beard Jr.'s Dragons of Space puzzle. Actually, the this picture is divided into nine parts. Each of these nine parts was used on a different card in the game. Eight of them are on dragon cards, and one of them is a dragon monster, I believe. And here's a dragon card. One of the ones from the puzzle. Start out with an Ort Dragoness. Corrupt Politician. Independent Freighter. Hey, come on, focus. Corrupt Politician. It played on a train card, played on a ship or base card. This is one of those cards that you want to play on your opponent's terrain, but normally you can't play directly to an opponent's terrain, so you'd have to move in there with, say, a shuttle or transporter. Dependent freighter. Uh, the, the blue generic ships. You could play in any deck, whereas the uh, Empire-specific ships, like the Krebs heavy cruiser here, can only be played in a crevice deck. You can see the difference in the hard texture, the dimpling from the beta card versus the smooth appearance of the primary edition. There's another change that comes as it goes from primary edition to universe edition. So then the primary edition, we have a rules book. Now, the Space Dragons were considered a minor empire. Treated much like ships, so they could be played in a deck of any empire. We have Preba's Heavy Claw, a small nebula. Now you can kind of see on this one what I mean about the text being printed on directly onto the background texture makes it a little hard to read and there's a few of the background textures they use that were even harder than this transporter Dirigan light carrier Dirigan tribes another one of the ones that were considered a minor empire used in any deck Crewman, T5 terrain, space vertigo, and heavy cruiser. Crew action, Terry shield, Krebs light capsule, 
asteroid belt. Kerrigan frigate. Pretty small. H2 gravity wave. Now this is one of the ha hazard tarts. See how they change the background texture of the hazard to make it a lot better overall. Red one looks much better than this weird mess. Honey and Lake Cruiser. Come on, focus, focus. Illness card. This would play to knock out a crew to laboratory to generate research points. Comet. Escape pod. Generic S1 fleet ship. Technician. Small moon. Infio Guardian. This is weird space monster blob. It looks pretty cool. Some of the artwork in this was really good. Some of it was lackluster. Most of the stuff in primary and through universe edition was pretty good, I'd say. The main empires, they kept a very strong theme in them. One of the ways they did that is the same artist painted all of them in the initial sets. And you can see how this is a six-pointed star. This is a three-pointed star. So they have a similar theme without being identical all the time. You're looking alien doctor, ion storm, crevice destroyer, moon, fuser mechanism. This is a Indirigan tribe specific equipment card. And again, you can see how it can be a little difficult to read the text on the background. Jonian Escort, C7 Doctor. This was a misprint, although I don't think they ever corrected officially. But this was a C2 Doctor in the original set. And they accidentally misprinted it as C7. There's another C7 Doctor. For some reason, they just decided to keep it. Phaser Eel. Cargo fence of satellites. Here's another base. This one just has a bunch of phasers. Reb is again. Shuttle craft. Money and destroyer. See that's very similar design to the light cruiser here, but different vantage point of that design. Divergent Anomaly, Rebbe's Armor, here's a Rebbe's specific armor, Rebbe's Heavy Capsule, Force to Treat, Point Symbol Diagram, and Argonian Ship. So as you see, there's a handful of Argonian ships. I missed that one. So the civilian captain. There's a handful of Argonian ships, a handful of Krebis ships, a few generic and minor empire ships. And according to the deck building rules, these two shouldn't be in the same deck. As playable decks go, this one wouldn't be particularly playable. Now, can't really see because it's not going to focus on it, but you can see the basic design of this ship here. That's a four-pointed star for Argonian ship. So they did keep the same basic design, but they changed it up a little bit here and there. This deck, I imagine, will be pretty similar. Last one, uh, Mechad and corporate ships in it.
I get heavy cruiser. This one, instead of shields, they have nodes in the corner, so that their shields work very differently. This is for an electromagnetic field. Transporter, Nebula, Irrigant Escort, Truman. So a lot of these, the terrain, Space Vertigo. A lot of these are pretty much the same cards as in the other deck, although Corporate Escort isn't. Key crew action. Commercial base. Mechad frigate. Uh, here's another terrain. One of the things they did with some of these cards is built in countdown timers. This one provides four energy on the first allocation phase, three on the second, two on the third, and one. And it's discarded. So you basically get four turns of use out of this card. And then mine. This one causes two points of damage to one ship and then it's discarded. So it's good for that instant damage to a ship, surprise damage especially. Because an opponent might play some uh, cards to prevent damage or get a ship just to survive long enough to make it to his turn and then boom. Big bada boom. Boarding party there. Cytobon. Lucky targeting. This one increases the damage you do on a weapons volley. Corporate ship. These ones always reminded me of yellow Star Trek ships. They have the nacelles. I've seen some people liking these ones to shovel heads. They kind of are. I always kind of like the design, though. It was a play on the saucer design that Star Trek always had. card probe neck edge ships they're always I always like them too they're very angular although not regular and the mech are supposed to be a mechanized race so you can see them making very angular designs I guess phaser refit comet generic ship a helmsman This one, a, a damage causing hazard played against a ship with a causes one less damage, so he can get you through hazards more easily. Large asteroid breakdown. Here's a tuna cell destroyer. Energy synchronization. Pulsar. I can add escort. Now this is another one of the things I did kind of like about this game is that each of the ships had specific roles. The escort versus the destroyer. The escort could actually intercept damage meant for another one of your ships. So they actually kind of use the uh, the designs of uh actual navy naval uh designs naval ship designations that's what i'm trying to think of defense of electronic warfare illustration a scorpion security officer of course the scorpion didn't appear in this set show up in new empires and later plasma field small phaser reel corporate frigate Come on, focus. Sometimes they just doesn't want to focus. Love interest. Defensive satellites, mecha destroyer, shuttlecraft, armory distribution node. This could be played to a mecha adding an extra distribution node. Vectrian mercenaries. Hired mercenaries you could send on away missions. Dust cloud. Monster. Shield fiend. Corporate scout. This one's only got one to sell. Early warning beacon. Point symbol. 
And every one of these came with one of the Dragons in Space puzzle rule book. Transporter malfunction. Bolar 4. Phaser Stealth Raider. Uh, Bolar Stealth Raider. And Phaser. Planetary Phaser Bank. So, like the satellites, this is just a phasers. And a millennium molting for your dragons. A millennium molting allowed uh, dragons to get bigger. So again, we got a small handful each of these two empires. From the same set, I have a couple of booster packs here. I think I'm going to open two right now because I let this go on too long. I want to save at least a few of these though. These ones are very metallic, they're basically just foil. Heavy phaser refit scout capsule. Money and assault carrier. So that one's got a little four pointed fighter, three pointed carrier. Larger distribution node for your mech ad. Bolar stealth raider again. Bolar are minor empire, so they could be used in any deck. Nova causes X times four, so one damage to four targets. Explains more in the rules section. Lucky targeting. Bonian escort. Crewman. Wandering desire. Hot nobelium. Navigational error. I'm not sure which the rare card is from this one. I think it's the hot nobelium. I'm not sure. Ashes protection chamber. Come on. Planet Gouge. Here's a monster that attacks a planet. Pirate's Cash, a luck card. It's the L in the upper left hand corner there. And it provides some points for immediate allocation. Planetary Phaser Bank. Tramory fit, so extra heavy weapons for one of your uh, mech ed ships. Corporate light crew. C2, C7 doctor. This is the C2 version. System. Suicide squad. Wandering desire. Travis dreadnought capsule. These are pretty good. Have bunches of them already but actually one of the highest shield ships in the in uh, the Krebs fleet all righty on to new empires New Empires introduced four empires altogether. Actually, I think it was four plus a minor. There was a new new tribe of Endurigans. There's two empires that aren't included here. Two that are. So we have the two four. Two 
ancient ruins. So I thought that was P.O.T. P.O.T. is uh, one of the empires introduced here in New Empires, but I think it's two four that are included in starters. It's been a while since I've opened a starter. Sysop medical scanner. Scorpede. I always kind of like their ship designs. Oh no, I have two four and POT. Two four POT and Scorpede. So there's three different empires already in this starter. So maybe they all are in starters. Again, it's been a while since I've opened these. So POT is another major empire that normally can't be used in. A deck of another empire, the Obelisk system. This one is one of those really silly sci fi cards, space opera type stuff. Way too common because they're in the starters. Sextron Web Prowler, Space Monster. Genetic Mutation, Dragon or Monster cards, even weirder. Energy Moon, 2 4 Cutter. So here we have another 2 4 ship. For some reason, they changed the design at some point of the background of the 2-4 ships, and they never updated it. The second design here for the cutter is the one that they used throughout the game later. So There's a plasma dragon. A little hard to see because of the contrast, but you, know, you can see his head. Up here, he's got like plasma in his chest. Here, an arm over there. Tail. Some of it's pretty nice artwork. Some of it's, you know, this one's kind of weird. Not bad, but Cyber Programmer, Periodic Comet, Scorpion Frigate. T Escort, a Lucky Mine Explosion. Rat Infestation and a C4 Cyber Mage. T2 Captured Moon. We have our new rule book. 2 4 Light Fighter Carrier. Civilian Transporter. Reactionary Science Officer. This one replaced the Science Officer from the beta, Alpha and Beta releases. Logic. Speed ship EOT science cutter produces research points. That's the white blocks. Parallel universe, the white particle. Teamster. Agro move. These cards are stuck together a little here. 2 4 destroyer. Explosive mine. Fighter pilot. Deviant, Scorpion, Science Ship. All of the Empires had Science Ships, I think. Most of them did anyway. EOT Destroyer, Hypersonic, Scandic Blob, Radial Dish, Black Protostar, 2-4, Research Scout, Transport Shuttle, Media Personality by Enhancement, Scorpion Light Crew, pretty standard Scorpion design with the tail, 2 4 Frigate. These always, 2 4 ships always kind of reminded me of Romulan ships from Star Trek. Magnetic Cloud, Illness, Robotic Crew, Minor Planet. One of the th problems I always had. These cards, I'll see if I can show you. I want to get a common card. So I'm about to destroy a card. Generic crewman sounds good. These were not the best playing cards. Uh, most other trading card games or playing cards that you would buy do a bend test on them. It all the way down and it would bounce back. No bounce to that one. 
pretty much put a fold in it doing that. Another one of the things you can do to these cards that you can't do to any other playing card normally is you can literally peel it in half, completely destroying it. Now, this means that if you do any amount of shuffling with these cards, sooner or later you're going to catch two cards on the edge and start peeling it open. So, if you ever want to get these cards, do yourself a favor and put them in card sleeves. Otherwise, you're just going to watch your cards get destroyed on you. All right, so this is coming up on an hour for the start of our little thing here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end it with the first three starter decks that I open. I'll move on. I'll make another video where I start continue opening the next set of starter decks. So for now, adios. HMI, I'm, well, what is it? HMI module Alpha Humana on approach to space station Mercury.